This monster of a knife is the Kodiak from Work Tough Gear. If you're interested in hearing more about this knife, keep watching. And this is a big knife. Just look at this thing. Obviously, a chopping knife. And that's exactly what it's intended to do. And that's exactly what it does well. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. This knife was sent to me by Work Tough Gear so that I could share it with you. And I accepted this knife because of, well, actually, who the designer is. This is designed by a Canadian by the name of Alex. He is the owner of Borealis Knives in Ontario. And he's designed a whole series of knives, very similar in nature, um, uh, to this one in terms of design and he intends them for use in the outdoors of Canada and I, I think that's probably the biggest thing that drew me to these knives. Uh, so yeah that's the reason I have this knife. I have one other knife of Alex design that I will be bringing to you at some point known as the Wolverine. It's a scaled down version of this with a few differences but today it's all about the Kodiak. All right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the specifications for this knife, talk a little bit Bit about his design but I know what you really want to see you want to see this thing in action all right a couple more things I'll do is I'll show you what it came with and basically it came in this really nice kydex sheath and the sheath itself has a removable belt loop on it and that can be moved make go from left to right right to left however you want to put it on I suppose you could carry it horizontal but honestly this is too big a knife for me to carry on my belt Maybe if I had a huge leather belt wrapped around the side of me, but no, this is, this is a big knife as you'll see. What I did do though is turn it into a shoulder carry and it was really very easy to do. I had an extra shoulder strap from a shoulder bag that I had long since gotten rid of. And all I needed to do is take a couple of those split rings and find the right places for them on either side. And you'll see it and run it through the belt loop just for balance. Um, it carries over my shoulder uh, quite well and makes it so that I can walk through the woods hands free with this behind my back. And then when I want to pull it around and use it, it's, it's there and ready for me to use. Also distributes the weight a little bit better across my body. So I'll show you that in action in a moment. What else did it come with? This is part of what it came with was a paracord lanyard uh, or at least a length of paracord that I attached as a lanyard and this is one knife that a lanyard is all but mandatory really. I, I couldn't could not use this for any extended period of time without that lanyard as you'll see. But Work Tough Gear did send a few other things along as just little nice extras in this little bag. There is a beverage cozy, which is always nice. There is a, let me, well, let me get the ferrocerium rod out for you because it's a nice little thing to have. Put it in a kit or carry it in your pocket. There is a morale patch for Work Tough Gear that came with this. Beverage cozy. And two other things, I'll show you the ferrous Syrian rod, but there's also a little bag with an Allen wrench and two screws for the scales uh, or the handles should they come loose, but I haven't had that issue with it. And this is the ferrous Syrian rod, little tiny ferrous Syrian rod with built-in striker, nice orange, so you don't, if you drop it, you can find it. Kind of like a survival one. I put this in a, in a pocket somewhere in, in the backpack, just in case one of my other four or five <laughs> lighting devices I couldn't find, but it's nice to have, and maybe even in just a little day kit so that you have it with you when you're looking for it. All right, let me give you a few specifications for this monster as soon as I find my glasses. All right, let me get the knife out again. Like I said, this is a big knife. So obviously, full tang construction. You can see that the tang running right through the handle scales. Overall length, 15.2 inches. Yes, a big knife. 9.9 .9 inches blade. The cutting edge is 9.7 inches. The blade thickness, 0.27 of an inch. Yes, more than a quarter inch thick. Huge. It is a saber grind with a convex edge. It's almost a full flat grind as you can see. So it is a very tall saber grind. And uh, I, here's one of the things that work tough knife, work tough gear knives are known for is the convex edge. It's polished. I mean, mirror polished. And I've been working with this thing 
a lot. I, I'm seeing no damage to it whatsoever, but I'll talk more about the durability in a moment. But it's a polished convex edge, exceptionally sharp. I think that's one of the last things that goes on or happens to this knife before it hits the, uh, the shipping is for that to be polished like that. Having a convex edge on a knife like that is really important because the convex has so much strength behind its edge that it resists any damage much for much longer period of time. The spine is sharpened. It will throw sparks very readily, of course. All right, so what else can I say about it? It is a drop point design. Not a huge drop point, just a little bit. Um, it is made from SK85, Japanese SK85 steel, and that is a mid-range steel that in this case is sharpened to or hardened to a 5658 on the Rockwell scale. It is approaching 1095. I think it'll be somewhere around 1085, but it's all about the heat treat, and this steel is Obviously, he treated it very well for its intended purpose. It's, it's not going to be super, super hard at the edge, so you don't have to worry about chipping or rolling the edge out. This hasn't had any damage, uh, as I mentioned to it, but uh, yeah. Okay, so what else can I say about it? You ready for this? 28.2 ounces, or 30, and with the sheaf, 33.3 ounces. 28.2 ounces. Big and heavy. Nice. Uh, this is G10, green G10 on this one. Some of them come with liners and different materials. Uh, this has just enough texture on it to be grippy without being rough on your hands. See, that's the other thing. If, if something has a lot of grip and a lot of texture to it, if you're using bare hands and not gloves, it's going to wear on your hands quite quickly if you're doing a lot of chopping with it. This is not excessively smooth, but neither is it slippery. So, uh, well, you'll see it stays in my hand quite well. All right, so let's talk about the role of this knife and then we'll get to doing some, uh, some work with it. What do you do with a knife like this? Well, you know, chop, right? Obviously chopping, you could take down trees, or in this case, there are some trees taken down by the, uh, the recent hurricane that just provide me a nice opportunity to demonstrate this knife with. So chopping is what it's all about, splitting. So I did take this car camping with me this year and uh, the firewood is provided at the park. Well, you have to pay for it, but you have to use their firewood. And normally I take an ax to process it and it's kill and dried hardwood and it's about 16 inches long, so it's not, not easy easy wood to, to split, and I split everything with this. And, and I'll try and set up for some demonstrations for splitting. I can't guarantee that I can because of my location, but I was able to use this very effectively for splitting thick firewood. Now, uh, I will tell you, it may not be as effective as a splitting, or it's not as effective as a true splitting ax, but this did every bit as good as a hatchet that I had taken with me, but it did something better than the hatchet. So even a hatchet can get stuck in a piece of wood. So if this got stuck in the piece of wood, and occasionally it did, more often than not though, because of the width of this thing, it the wood just separated and fell apart uh, when flying. But what I found is that if this got stuck, and occasionally they will, your axe will get stuck too, and if you can't use the, the weight of the wood to split it further, then you need to baton it out. This one, you just finish the batoning through. In fact, a lot of the processing, that was all I really needed to do, was to have a good baton, and work at the big pieces of firewood they provide and just work from the outside and take it off in pieces all the way around. Uh, do you know, very effective that way and actually a lot safer, it's, unless you're in a very experienced person with an ax and a hatchet, then this is gonna be safer. You're still swinging a big sharp object, but this is more forgiving in that there's a lot more contact surface, so you don't have to work, while well, you still should be concerned, but you're more likely to make contact and not miss with a big knife than you are with an ax or a hatchet. And of course, the size of this demands that you're working on your knees, so you're less likely to bring it into your legs if you do miss. All right, so this is a big knife, but can this big knife do small tasks? Well, uh, Ron Hunt once said that um, a big knife can do all the tasks of a small knife, but a small knife cannot do the tasks of a big knife. And I believe that to be true in this case. This can do a lot of the tasks of a small knife. It can certainly feather. It can certainly do some carving. It can certainly process all the wood that you want. 
Could you process game with this knife? Well, you could, but it <laughs> wouldn't be my first choice. It wouldn't be very light and manipulative in the hand. It would work. Could you carve uh, figure four traps and things like that? Yes, you could. Again, wouldn't be my first choice, but you can do all the things you can do with a small knife, but maybe not with quite as much ease or finesse. This still does have a reasonably good point, so you can actually work up at the tip up here and do some finer carving, but again, it wouldn't be my first choice. All right, so those are some of the basic comments that I'll put or I'll say about the knife at this point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to set up, there is a down tree over here, a nice rock uh, maple or sugar maple, which are very hard and should be a good test of whether what this knife can do. All right, uh, the tree I have chosen is a downed rock maple that is laying right here. And it's about four and a half, maybe five inches in diameter at this point. It's a little larger towards the trunk down here but this is suspended high enough that I can get a good swing on it and still be safe. Uh, it appears to be dead. There's no leaves on it. it. I believe it was dead prior to the storm taking it down but well no it should be still very good and hard. I wanted to quickly show you this. This is this bandolier or baldric style carry that I have with the strap. As you can see, it carries nicely cross body. You can, over either shoulder, I can get it behind, better behind my back over the other shoulder, but I like carrying it like this. It's out of the way. My hands are free until I am ready to use the knife. A couple of things as I get ready, I am using gloves and I think it's a wise idea to use gloves when you're using a knife like this. You'll get better grip, less wear on your hands, a little bit more protection. Uh, make sure you've got swinging area. You know, if this is to move or jump because of me cutting through it, I want to make sure I can get out of the way of it when it does come apart. And uh, yeah, so I have a bit of an escape route here. No different than if you were taking down a tree with an ax or anything else. Now, here's the other thing I want to say. I don't do a lot of knife chopping. If I was processing this tree for firewood, I, I would probably be using a saw. To me, a saw is much more efficient in terms of the energy in for uh, reward afterwards. A saw will, whether it's faster or not, that's debatable, but uh, you know, I would use a saw. Having said that, it is a lot of fun using a big knife to chop with. And if you have one tool, not to say that this is a one tool option, it could be, but if you have the one tool and it is this big knife, then you wanna make sure that you can work with it like this. All right, so. I'm using the lanyard on my wrist and the way to do that is I put it over my thumb, wrap it so it goes across the back of my hand and then I have my hand on the handle so you can see it running across the back of my hand. It means as you chop, if the knife does want to move forward, then you have a better chance of holding on to it and I find it easier to hold on to that way. All right, so what I'll do is I'll start off doing half a dozen chops or so. I'll bring the camera in so you can see how this thing works and hits the, uh, hits the wood and makes the chips fly. Here we go. That wood is still very solid. All right, I am going to bring the camera in so you can get a little bit closer shot of the action. Yeah, that penetrates. Rock maple, they call it that for a reason. into the heartwood. Got to widen the opening up a little bit. Oh, that wants to bite. Better than halfway. Ah. Ah. 
that thing really digs in. Coming down to the last couple of swings. There we go. So I have about a 16 inch section of that same log that I just chopped off the rock maple. In fact, this is the end that I was chopping. I did saw the, saw the other end off because I wanted to sit flat for this demonstration. Um, yeah, so I have split wood this diameter with a single swing from the top. But now that I have this chopped, the tree was dead, but not long dead. So it's not really a dry enough tree that will split easily. It's still going to want to stay together, but I should be able to baton this without issue. Okay, without issue. It's a big piece of wood and it's not going to be easy to baton. The other reason is I'm working on a granite rock here. I don't have a log or stump that I can use for an anvil underneath that uh, to protect the edge of my knife from. So that's another reason for not chopping. And what I will do, I take a little piece of wood, I'll put it here so that when the knife does come through, if the knife moves through quickly, the edge of the knife will catch here. I have about a 24 inch, 26 inch piece of wood for a baton and the knife. And uh, yeah, so safety, I just want to make sure. I am going to try to split this right through the center. I'm hoping that it will go through. As I said, this wood is hard, hard wood. Um, safety, if the knife does go through the wood unexpectedly, you don't want it coming towards you. So make sure you have a good safe direction. As hard as that wood is. Okay, the center core, the heartwood, is a little punky, not unexpected, but the rest of the wood is really, really hard. But you can saw that knife had really no issues splitting through this piece of tree. All right, the uh, next thing I want to attempt with this is a little bit of feather sticking. Just looking at the wood and it's definitely wetter than I would normally choose for feather sticking. It won't make great feather sticks and it won't make great fire lighting feather sticks, but I think it will work for demonstration purposes. And so the question is, is can you feather with a knife like this? Can you do it? Well, the answer is yes. It is a little different than working with a smaller knife because you have the weight to contend with pushing it down, pulling it up. The weight can actually be a benefit in sliding down because it'll continue any forward momentum, making it a little easier. But finding the edge, the right angle to the wood is a little bit more challenged by the thickness of this blade and the convex edge. But let's see if I can't get a few curls going off of this. Okay, not great, but you can see these are thicker th than a normal curl would be. But I, then I can slow down and get the really thin ones by taking my time. So yes, you can do feather sticks with a big knife like this. All right, in the last demonstration I want to do is show how to use a big knife like this for casting sparks with your ferrocerium rod. So a couple of things. One is most people would grab their knife, I normally do when it's a small one, and run the knife down the ferrocerium rod. Uh, you can do that with this knife, but boy is it ever awkward to do. The knife is going to want to slam into the ground and any disturb any materials you have there to catch the spark. So it is not the most efficient or effective way of doing that. So I've demonstrated this with another large knife previously, but the way to cast sparks with a big knife like this is to lay the knife down and move the ferrocerium rod across it. So, uh, so as I mentioned, the wood I was just carving is a little greener than I would have liked to have had. So it's not going to make good tinder for catching a spark, but I think I can still demonstrate the sparks being cast. So I have my knife. You're going to tilt it until you find the angle you want. You may have to do this a few times to get just the right angle. 
Make sure you've got a nice clean spot on your ferrocerium rod and I'm making holes in my sitting pad here. But that's a lot safer and a lot more efficient. Put the sparks out. That's a lot more efficient than trying to move the knife up and down the ferrocerium rod. You know, before I did the testing, I gave credit for the quote, a big knife can do everything a small knife can, but a small knife can't do everything a big knife can. I think I gave that to the wrong person. I said Ron Hunt. It's actually Ron Hood. So I apologize to that for that, but Ron Hood is responsible for that saying, and he's right on with that. This can do pretty much everything a small knife can do. Not as well as some tasks like hand carving and things like that. I don't think this is the best feather sticker in the world, but it can do that, absolutely. And it may not be the best meal prep, although with that high saber, I'd use it, but I, it just wouldn't be the first knife I would choose to go to. I want to talk about the company Work Tough Gear for a minute because I think this is really important. So Work Tough Gear is a family-owned business based in Taiwan, and their commitment is to quality at a great affordable price. And that's what they've achieved with every one of their knives. I only own two of them so far, but by every account, there is never an issue with the quality of these knives. And the other thing, I really like about it is their ethic of using or and under license the designs of other knife makers or knife designers. So for instance, Alex at Borealis Knives, the designer of the Kodiak, licensed this design to work tough gear to produce it. Uh, it is like a marriage made in heaven in a lot of ways. There is no copyright infringement, there is no cheating, no begging off of somebody else's credibility. The designer gets the full credibility and the respect they deserve as well as a share in the profits of course. And I think that speaks very well of the company that they do it that way. And they have a lot of different designers, a lot from around the world. Some of their knives, this one is this is a wood processing chopping knife. Some of them look more combat oriented or crossover knives that maybe survival do a little bit of each. Some are pretty fantasy based looking knives. I, still supposedly very highly effective. I don't have any of them to test. You know, it might be interesting testing them. I don't do a lot of big knives, but they have some small knives that I'm hoping to be able to get my hands on to test out as well. So yeah, it's worth taking a look at the designs from Work Tough Gear. I'll be providing that link, of course, in the description. I'll also be providing links to Alex at Borealis Knives so that you can go right to the source of the designer for this knife to see what else he has available. Okay, it's a big knife. Can it do everything a small knife can? Pretty much, but maybe not as well as a small knife can, but it can still do them. But my small knives won't be able to do the chopping or splitting that this one can. Speaking of chopping and splitting, let's just talk about that for a second. Look at the design of the handle with the contours and the way it is downsloped, and then there is a hook on the very pommel right here. This is designed to grab your hand and not let go, and it does do that, mostly. Uh, what I notice when I'm chopping is, and again, here's how you would use the lanyard. Fits a little bit better when I have a glove on. But what I find is, as I swing this knife, all that weight out front, the centrifugal force means the knife would, if I wasn't holding on to it, fly out of my hand at great velocity. So when it strikes the wood, my hand will want to slide to the back a little. It stops, but I'm not, that's about where I'm at. You can see where there is a gap there forward. So I can move up on the knife, but after a few swings, my knife wants to go to the very back. If there was anything that I might change on this knife, I might ask Alex to make the design so that this part of the pommel extends a little bit further in this direction and is a little wider in this direction. Something like you might see on a kukri, not quite like that, but something you might see there where there is more to catch the base of my hand and keep it from wanting to slide off. Now, there was no way I was gonna lose control of this knife, but I did find that it wanted to move to that far forward in my hand. So I just wanna point that out so that nobody gets their, hand, their hands on this knife and finds that it does move forward. And remember, I have a double XL hand, so that is a big grip. For some people, that's a grip and a half. For me, it's just a good size handle. If there was anything else, for me only, I would ask that these be a little thicker through here. That's just so that I'd have more grip on it. 
That's nice though. That really is nice. I have never been a fan of huge knives. I do have some huge knives that I'll carry, especially during the winter for wood processing. This will certainly go into that rotation. But as I mentioned, and they started off, I do have another one of Alex's designs. I have the Wolverine and I'll be reviewing that soon. And you'll see that it's quite similar to this, but it probably covers the bases a little bit better than this one does because let's face it, this is almost two pounds, right? This is a big knife, as I say. All right, I think I've rambled on enough about this knife. If you have any questions or any comments about this design from Work Tough Gear or any of their other designs, any recommendations, I'd be interested in hearing them. I will provide all the information, including the specifications for this knife, as well as the links to where you can take a look at this knife for yourself if you're interested. And yeah, so until next time. Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.